Hello again, welcome back. So this is now the second part of this two-parter where I'm now going to walk you through the process of creating a four-track recording workflow inside Logic Pro. But then again, the process will be generally applicable to all good digital audio workstations, as you might have seen in the first part, which I highly recommend you uh, check that out um, before we delve into this because I unpack a lot of the reasoning and my thoughts behind why I'm actually doing this in the first place. So this video covers a lot of topics, a couple being digital plugins, emulating analog behavior, and taking the stereo output of the computer and recording it back into the computer. I probably don't go into each one with, with a fine tooth comb, but if you have any questions or anything further you want to know about it, please feel free to leave a comment down below or I may cover it in a future video. So with that being said, Enjoy the video. Cool. Time to show you how to turn Logic into a four track machine. So uh, in Logic, you're just gonna, gonna get four audio tracks up and you just do that here. It's a four track, you need four tracks. So the next thing I'm going to do is uh, select all four, four of these tracks and then right click and go down to create track stack. And there I'm going to select summing stack. We want all four of these signals to be rooted into one output. So yeah, let's, let's create that. There we go. So here we have four tracks summed into one bus. It might be helpful to label it at this point. Uh, here we go, uh, four track. Then what might be a really cool thing to do, if we command D that, we duplicate it. So now we have two four tracks. What I'm gonna show you in a little bit is how you can bounce the first four tracks down to two tracks on the second machine, meaning you have to commit what you did here down to these two tracks. So the next thing I want to do, uh, and don't get too scared by this, but what I'm going to do is Command-2. Command-2 opens up the mix of you of uh, Logic, and then from there, we're going to close the main window. Oh my gosh. Rowan, why, do, why did you do that? Well, here's why. Because with a tape machine, you don't see waveforms, see the visual aspect of audio regions and MIDI regions. Well, definitely not MIDI regions, but audio regions and the waveforms and the... We can sometimes be misguided by our eyes. Probably the most important thing, not being misled by visual aspects and actually listening instead. There's something quite vital missing though, and I'll show you what you need to do is you need, you need to bring back the transport float, which provides you with the rewind, play, record, uh, essentially your position in the project. What you might actually want to do is um, switch off the locators, uh, probably switch off tempo. Don't need that, forget that. Tape machines don't have tuners. All you need is the time. Like instead of seeing it like, oh yeah, the chorus starts at bar, 20, but we don't have bars in tape machines. We have to look at time codes, you know? So the chorus starts at 50 seconds, you know, 50 seconds in, that's, yeah, once you've started your first few recordings, you you can start realizing where the song starts where and where all the sections come in and out, and you write that, you can write that down on a piece of paper somewhere. Okay, so we've got this view. We've got the time code, we've got the transport, and we've got our two four tracks. We've got four track one and four track two. I'll label that four track two. There we go. So you can very easily start recording like this, absolutely fine. But so a little touch that I'd like to suggest is adding certain types of plugins if you have them to uh, provide further like analog emulation. For instance, if you have a tape emulating plugin, which emulates the, the way tape affects uh, an audio signal, you might want to try putting a tape emulation on the bus so that when the signals are being summed together, they are going into a tape emulation and therefore the audio will be reacting as if it's being played back on a tape machine. Uh, I've got here Black Rooster Audio's Magnetype, which is a, a great sounding plug-in emulation of uh, a tape machine. You can keep the noise on, you know, super realism. So yeah, um, put a tape emulation on 
both the four track outputs so that it provides some kind of authentic simulation of the way tape reacts to audio. And what you might want to do then is a lot of tape machines have EQ sections on each individual track. It's not it's nothing wild, it's usually, you know, simple EQs like just a high and a low. What what you can do is find an EQ which matches that sort of style and one one that I, that, that springs to my mind is the, is the Waves VEQ3 which has um, a simple high pass filter which filters out the lows, a low a low frequency shelf which provide a little bit of low end information, mid range filter and a high frequency filter which you can add a bit of brightness to. There's not many um, small four track machines which have EQs like say Waves uh, Q10 or even Logic's own built in channel EQ which has how many bands? Six, seven, eight. Eight filters. It's not often you'll find uh, small form factor four track tape machines which have eight filters on each track. So it's worthwhile looking into making sure you only use one kind of plugin and making sure it's you know it has you know it has fairly limited options like like the Waze VEQ three. Find the recording a bit too dark. You can crank up the high frequency filter a, a little bit. High frequency filter. If it's if you want to make the low end a bit boomier. There you go, you just crank that up a little bit. I think it's uh, it'll be a good idea to not go for an EQ which is too crazy because it's not what four tracks do. So there we go, we have two four track machines which have tape emulation and EQ section. We're, we're essentially building a modeling of uh, how a four track works. So basically don't go too crazy with um, processing. Fully appreciate and work on getting the recordings right. You know, the recordings might come out rough and ready but it could, it could be something quite special. Okay, now I want to show you how you would bounce between one machine and the other. So say now you've recorded onto all four tracks of the first machine, what you shouldn't do is create another track. What you should try to do is take the output from the machine where all the four tracks are summed together and what you, should, what you want to do is send that output to the first two tracks of the next machine. I have to, I have two ways to show you of bouncing. Uh, the first one is that um, a lot of interfaces have built into them a function of looping back into themselves as a way of recording the computer's own stereo output or uh, any other source within the computer back into itself. The loopback function on my Focusrite Thunderbolt interface comes back into the computer on inputs 11 and 12. So what I would do is I'd set track 1 of the second machine to input 11 and set the second track to input 12. So that's that means that the left channel information coming out of the computer is going into track 1 and the right channel information out of the computer is coming into 12. So when, when this plays back, the audio will come out of this stereo out. And uh, because of the way I've set up routing in the loopback, the loopback is listening to the computer output, which is 1 and 2. So whatever goes out here will go into track 11 and 12. So what, what you do then is set that to set these two tracks to record enable but don't input monitor because that will definitely cause feedback. So the second way is, is far more accessible is using a piece of free software called Soundflower and what Soundflower is is essentially software that enables the computer audio to be recorded back into the computer itself. What you do with Soundflower, once you've downloaded it and installed it, the, way, the easiest way I found in doing it is I create a new aggregate device within the computer which combines my interface or combines your device, uh, any device for inputting and outputting audio and using an aggregate device to combine that with Soundflower. Uh, I'll quickly demonstrate to you how you would go about doing that. So you go to the audio MIDI setup in your computer and then you select Soundflower. And what that does is it combines the two and means that you can, within your session, use both Soundflower and your main input output device. So for example, you, I'll tick Focusrite Thunderbolt and Soundflower 2 channel. I've created it here, so I've got the Focusrite Plus Soundflower channel 2. And here it will clearly show you what in, ins and outs 
each device inhabits. So here um, I can see that Soundflower is inhabiting 29 and 30 inputs and the 29 and 30 outputs. What you need to do next is make sure uh, you set your in, in and out device to the said device that you have now created in, in your aggregate devices. And here's, and here's how you can now use Soundflower within your DAW to bounce. Back to our previous example, I want to bounce all, all the information from the first four track to the first two tracks of my second four track machine. How I, how I go about doing that is I, put, I would put a output send onto the four track output and I would send it out the stereo output corresponding to the Soundflower device. As I showed you before, in my circumstance, they correlated to 29 and 30. Of course, it's important you make sure you know where Soundflower is in your aggregate device. The left channel is 29 and the right channel is 30. There we go. I would record enable those tracks and I would send out of the first machine. Therefore, that the audio coming out of this machine will be going out of that send and into tracks one and two. And the stereo information will be recorded accordingly. So that's panned left, that's panned right, that's panned right, that's panned left. That stereo information would be recorded into the tr tracks one and two. And then you just pan those hard left and hard right. So I hope that wasn't too difficult to follow. If there are any further questions on any of what I have gone over, please leave them in the comments below so that I can continue to help however I can. So there we go. That's how I have created four track workflow within the computer. Taking away the potential and the temptation to add tons of plugins onto one element. What that can do is it will force you to focus more on the details of the recording and making sure that you get the recording right in the first place instead of reaching for tons and tons of plugins just to get it exactly how you want it. You know, it, it doesn't it doesn't have to be meticulous and perfect all the time. For me, I can see going about recording process in this way, helping me to improve my recording skills. So there you have it. That's how I created a four track method of recording inside Logic. And also a bonus note, your computer is going to thank you muchly for not using hundreds of plugins and absolutely torturing its CPU. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and learned something here. If you really did, please consider subscribing because there's more on the way and you'll be able to find out as soon as that happens. So thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one.